to the virtual green room. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you episode two of Timeless Tuesday. And my classic soap of choice today is going to be from Vienna, Austria. And this is Hasslinger, I think it's Schaffmilch Reiserseife. Reiserseife. I'm not German, I'm not Dutch, so the pronunciation is a bit above me. But yeah, that's our soap today. So, a bit of background. Hasslinger was founded just after World War II, like 1949, by a guy called George Hasslinger, believe it or not. He inherited or at least moved into or bought a soap making factory that dated back to the 1890s. His focus as a soap maker was using predominantly plant based, non animal ingredients, honey, medicinal plants, herbs, stuff like that. That's what he prided himself on. Um, it's funny actually because their, their initial soap was a tallow soap, which kind of contradicts that. And I, I'm wondering kind of how that fits in in terms of the timeline of Hasslinger. But in 2017, his grandson, um, Andreas Hasslinger, decided to reformulate. And in that reformulation, his idea was lining up further with the mantra that his grandfather, George, set, which was we don't want to have anim any animal products within our soaps. So we're going to remove the tallow. But for some reason, they decided to put palm oil in it. Now, for anyone that doesn't know what palm oil is, palm oil is basically an oil that in this industry, I don't look at very lightly because it's very rarely sustainable. Um, I'm going to put a link of how palm oil is sourced. Uh, so there's two, there's two types of Hasslinger. There's the tallow version, which is what I'm using. And that was uh, kindly sent to me by um, Michael Friedberg from a uh, beautiful North Carolina. This was sent to me by Michael. The old version, which you've seen me use on video. Again, I'll link that in the description below if I remember. Um, that is now vegetal. So there's no tallow in it whatsoever. It uses palm oil. It just seems a bit weird to me. Why you take out tallow and put in something that isn't sustainable. I understand that your mantra is not to be, not to have any animal products or tallow or anything like that. Surely you replace that with something that's not, you know, quote unquote frowned upon. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's gonna be our soap. I have this pressed into the uh, loading bowl. Um, this is a loading bowl. I don't lather in here. I load from here. I have a certain way of doing it and I'll show you. Um, my brush of choice today is going to be this Grizzly Bay Declaration B8. So what I do, if I'm gonna load from here, there's two ways of doing this. I think the best way, honestly, is to, um, so let me close the, the plug here. I think the best way is to load with a very dry brush because Adding water to lather will pretty much should be making a lather in the bowl. I don't want to do that. I just want to load and I want to load on the top. The thing that is very um, obvious for me about Hasslinger, one, it's very, very easy to work with. The vegan, well, the vegetal version was. And two, this thing lathers up very, very quickly. You can see what I'm doing is kind of kissing the tips here and it's producing a pretty quick proto lather. So once I pick up enough soap, all I'm gonna do here is literally just dip the tips. So in fact, what I might do, actually you'll see this. So I'm gonna continue to load the soap. So I've got a decent load there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some water here. So I'm gonna actually use distilled water for this just cause I can. And then I'm literally just going to sprinkle some on the top here. Adds a little bit more water. In fact, let's just shoot. There we go. So we've got that here. Now let's just spit more wet and this can start creating even more of a proto lather. Don't worry about that because it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to load this brush up the best I can. Okay, I think we're good. So you can see that there. It's loaded. I'm just going to put this aside now. And uh, our razor of choice today is the Christopher Bradley in stainless steel. This is using the SB Deep Light. So that's what we're going to be using today. 
Um, so let me, actually, is it D? No, it's C, my bad. So I'm gonna kind of take, take off the specs, we're gonna wet the face, and we're gonna get to lathering up. Um, firstly, I would like to thank everyone for the fantastic reception I got on my first video. Um, I really couldn't ask for more. I'm doing this because I find it fun. And the fact that you guys enjoyed that first episode so much is heartwarming to me, so thank you. Um, I'm going to keep this going. I have a lot of vintage shop. Um, a lot has been sent to me, and I've bought quite a bit, so... So the scent on this, I would describe this as clean and soapy, but it, there's a musk and I can't explain what that is. There's not a, um, there's no, there's no scent notes per se, like discernible scent notes. So this is very dry, like as I said. So I, all I'm doing this for is to force a crater into the brush, like so. I fire. And then we start building a lather. So like I said, I've used the, um, the vegetable version. I've not shaved with this version. This is the tallow version. However, from my perspective, from the test lather I did yesterday, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I suggest you do. Um, the test leather I did yesterday, this seems to have greater density. The form factor is interesting. I'm, I'm predominantly a tub loader, right? So loading, not from the tub. A little bit unusual to me. I mean, it's not something I identify as an issue, frankly, but it's different. This stuff is just so easy to work with. If you do it how I just did it, which is loading with a dry brush, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to pick up soap, not make a lather. The lather is made on your face. And uh, that for me is the most efficient way of doing that. So yeah. So this is a different consistency to the cell I used. For example, this is a little bit more dense. This is a sheep's milk, lanolin and tallow based soap, which for me is a little bit closer to what our art is, well, our, what artisans in our small hobby are using now. So the performance is a little bit closer, I would say. Don't get me wrong. There's something very important to mention with this. These are soaps born out of utility. And what, do exactly, what exactly do I mean by that? These are soaps that are made to lather and be slick. And frankly, unless they're Williams Mug Soap, <laughs> they all do that, so. So you can see it's building a really nice consistency. The density uptick on from the tallow from the uh, vegetal version is noticeable to me. Um, like I've said before, I enjoy density in soaps. And from another thing, I've also noticed that milk both milk milk based soaps work very well for me. Um, and this is definitely one of those. So. This utilizes sheep milk, sheep's milk, as I said at the start. So you can see the density being created there. It's actually really quite dense. 
notifications on my watch again. Go away, world. Okay, so we're just gonna paint water now. This is very easy to work with this stuff. There we go. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to get this version of the soap, but you can definitely still get the vegetal version. If you watch that video of mine, the vegetal version is still very good. It's not, you know, I don't think it's as good as this. This is a very high quality lather. In my opinion, it's a bit, it's better than the lather I had from Cella. There's a noticeable density. And for me, that lines up a bit closer to what the artisans in our industry are doing. Very much like Mitchell's wall fat. I found that with Mitchell's wall fat, it starts quite airy. You just need to be willing to work with it, in my experience. Okay, I think we're good here. We're gonna go with that, I think, guys. Carve sea plate with a uh, Hasslinger uh, vintage tallow soap. Let's do it. This soap is very good, I have to say. Very good. So this is an example. That you guys that aren't using all the artisan based soaps, if you're using this, for me, you're not missing out. The only thing you're missing out on is scents. Very, very good. So the vegetal version had actually a very nice post. And I expect this to be the same for the most part. Let's pass one done very quick. So rinse off the face and see what sort of layer we have left behind here. Very slick, really nice. Kind of like shiny layer, as you can see here. Very impressed. So this for about 60 grams, which doesn't seem like much, but I will say it's a hard puck, very hard puck. And uh, in US it's about $9. It's probably even cheaper than that in Europe, frankly. So I'd bear that in mind. I still think this will last you about, you know, your 70 shaves or so regardless of the size, because it's very hard. The lather on this is actually very nice. It's not airy. I don't feel that it's airy at all. It has better density than it does airy. Well, that's a weird way of putting it. It's more dense than it is airy. And uh, for me, that's a bit of a contrast to cello that I used in the last episode. So let's go cross grain. All I want is performance in a soap. Using this. 
I wouldn't miss Artisan Soaps. Maybe the scents. But you're not needing performance. A performance boost. There will be soaps I use, but I do feel that will be a thing. But Cella and Hasslinger, haven't been those. Yeah, very nice. It feels protective, very protective. Um, I, I can't complain, like it, it performs very, very well. Okay, let's do a bit of a clean up. And uh, we'll finish off the shave here, so. At the moment, I'm very impressed by this. I, I do notice a little bit of a boost in performance from the, um, from the vegetable version, because I used that one first. Razor is just so comfortable for me. It's comfortable, but it, it does a good job in removing hair efficiently. Cool. I am happy with that where we are, guys. So I'm gonna take all of this residual soap out of the brush. We're gonna get this on the face. And I'll be back for my post shave and my final thoughts. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, it's post shave time. So, post shave on this, or immediate post shave. Like I constantly say, there's a difference between immediate post shave and then like long lasting post shave. When people say it's, oh, it has a great post shave, it's difficult for me to take that at face value because I think you need to test that stuff. The immediate post shave on this is actually very quite good. It's not, it's not drying like Cella was. My skin does feel hydrated, but still not to the level of the artisan soaps. I would still probably use a post shave product with this. Um, I'm not gonna be using aftershave. I'm, I'm testing uh, the Ariana and Evans Hoshitsu Elixir. So we're gonna one pump of that. Bit of water. Okay, so let's, let me give you my final thoughts on this Hasslinger, on this vintage Hasslinger. So, this is outstanding. Um, this is one of the better mass produced soaps I've used. Um, However, this is in their old formula. I think that if you really want their old formula, you can still get it. Uh, someone will have it. It was made in such volume that someone will have some pucks in a drawer somewhere that they probably don't want. And if you're really serious about picking this up, you probably can. I will tell you that the, the difference between that one and the vegetable version for me is just a clear uptick in density. I find the, just the general performance of the other metrics, like the, I, I think the post shave on that was a little bit better or immediate post shave rather. Um, I didn't notice much of a difference as far as slickness and residual slickness go. The scent is identical as well, so it's not really different. Um, for $8 or $9 for 60 grams, you'd be thinking that's quite expensive, but the way I'm looking at it is that's a very hard puck. Um, very hard, like I can't put dents in it. You'll see here, if I press down, it's solid. 
which that, what that means to me is it's going to take a while to get through that. Uh, is it worth it to me? Yeah, I think that is. If you if you are the sort of person that just wants to use one soap and shave every day, um, Hat Slinger is definitely an option for you, as is Chella, as is quite a lot of these. You know, I think all of these have one thing in common, is that they're timeless and they've been proven to be timeless. They, have, they are higher up the spectrum of the performance. So I think overall, I'm, I'm really happy with how that soap performs. I actually say in, in terms of performance, it is a bit better than Chella. Uh, I put it up there with the Mitchell's Wool Fats of the world. Um, Mitchell's Wool Fat for me is my, my favorite mass produced soap. And yes, I'm a bit biased because I'm English, but I think the, the experience of Mitchell's Wool Fats is a little bit closer to what I experienced with tallow soaps or artisan soaps. So that will be coming in the series. Hassling is fantastic. Chell is fantastic. Just remember whatever you're using, if it's one of these, you, you can't go wrong. Like these work. I would recommend a post shave product though. Um, doesn't need to be like a, a fancy one like that. Just a, just a generic off the shelf balm, like one of those um, like L'Oreal balms or is it L'Oreal? It might be. Nivea is another good option, but yeah. Um, my razor of choice today was the Carl Christopher Bradley in stainless steel with the SBC plate. Um, I love this razor. I've used it so many times that it is autopilot for me and it's just incredibly comfortable. My brush was the Declaration B8 Grizzly Bay Crust Resin Handle. And my post was the, it's funny because I can't see the lid for this. There it is. Um, my post was the Hoshitsu Elixir by Ariana Evans that I'm currently testing. It's very good for my first impressions. It absorbs very quickly and it's kind of what I want. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode today. Today we shave with uh, Hasslinger Schaffmilk Reiser Siphon or Reiser Seif if you uh, want to hear me destroy the pronunciation of it. Very good, I would recommend it if you can get a hold of the vintage one. If not, the vegetable one is just as well. It's, it's almost as good. It's almost there, I would say, but it's not quite as good. I don't think you'll notice much of a difference if you use both of them, because I didn't, so there is that. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the episode today and you know around here, I'd really, really appreciate you subscribing. Try and hit that 1,000 subscription mark so I can bring you guys uh, kind of like YouTube lives. I do them on Instagram, but there's a certain... Th there's a degree of it being special for me because you guys have been the one that have supported me from the start of this journey, and I want to bring you that content. So there is that. Um, yeah, I guess... F <laughs> I guess we're going to bookend that and say... Uh, my name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Groom Room. Whatever you are in the world, have a wonderful day. And goodbye for now.